As adults, if we knew that we had to inject ourselves with insulin every day, we'd probably complain. But for an eight-year-old Northridge resident, Adam Fishman, insulin means the difference between life and death. Diabetes, needles, and terrible mood swings are no strangers to Adam. I asked Adam how he feels when his blood sugar is low. When I'm low, I feel like I feel sweaty, um, stomach hurts. Adam is an eight-year-old child who developed diabetes when he was five. He was quite ill when he was first diagnosed. I think the parents had been suspicious for about a month before he was diagnosed that he was getting sick, although they had never thought that he would have diabetes. He was initially hospitalized here for a week for two purposes, one to educate the family and Adam how to take care of his diabetes and for us to stabilize him from a metabolic standpoint. A pediatrician said to, said to me, when I know there's a hospital across the street, but for my child, I would want him at the best and I would send him to Children's Hospital. And that's where we went. We carried him in and uh, he was admitted and his blood sugar was very high, he was very sick, and within 24 hours he was feeling better, got his color back, and we spent a week in the hospital with him. So it, was, it was tough. So he's just a normal kid that uh, has been stuck down with this disease or illness, but he has learned to handle it like uh, a trooper. My mom thought of it, um, so I used to take just, um, I just used to take apple juice and everybody would be wondering why. And I told that to my mom. I told that to my mom once, and she said, why don't you explain it to the class? Hey, boys and girls, as you know, Adam has diabetes. Adam thought his mother's idea was a good one, to explain to his classmates what happens to him when his blood sugar is low. Adam wanted the class to understand that being a diabetic means that he must inject himself twice a day with insulin. It's very important to Adam that the other kids don't treat him differently. He doesn't want to be known as that kid with diabetes. This is my, um, sugar. it has a needle in here. It, um, has a little needle in it. Um, this is my machine and it reads my blood sugar. I turn the machine on this way, just push that little button there. Um, and then I load it, just push it down. And then I push, and I just push that little button there. And it will stick me. Adam is really remarkable. Since he was about six, he has been able to do all of these diabetes related maneuvers himself. A lot of children around 10 or 11 years of age start to take some responsibility for their diabetes, but Adam has taken it much earlier than, than the average child. He is really responsible as to recording the blood sugars to, and being able to do the whole procedure himself. He gives his own insulin injections. His parents check to be sure he has drawn up the right amount of insulin because that's absolutely critical to, to take the right amount. And then he gives his own shots. Every morning and night, I take a um, shot. I take uh, how much I'm going to get. I'll, I'll just take, like, I'm going to take two units of regular. So I take two units of air in here. I push the air in, and I just take two units of this out. And then that's how much I'll get. I'll just take it now. I have to get um, fat. Just stick it into me. Can it stand? Then I'll just push the insulin in. And then I'll just take it out. And then I'll be done. Adam gets a lot of support from his parents, Ira and Sue. They told me what the most difficult part of dealing with Adam's diabetes is. The hardest part would be having to take his shots twice a day, having to test his blood. Um, the, the mood swings of high and low blood sugar are a real deal hard for him to deal with. It's hard to see your child have to go through it. I know that your child will have to go through it for the rest of their life. You know, uh, there was a line there that uh, 
Sue Fishman said, she said, we wanted him to go to the best. We wanted him to go to Children's Hospital because Children's Hospital is the best. And we want it to remain the best and we want it to continue to be on the cutting edge of medical technology on one hand and on the other hand, the neighborhood hospital for Los Angeles and Southern California where we take our kids, our kids who are sick, our kids who are ill, our kids who are hurt, and this hospital makes them well. Now, Adam is a, obviously a remarkable kid. He's kind of in control. He's in charge of things. But you know what? Every year, this hospital treats thousands of kids. And some of them are success stories, and some of them aren't. But they get the best care possible. And I want you to call right now if you can, because I want to say hello to Adam. How are you? Hi. Mom, Sue? Hi. How you doing? You stood up in front of that classroom and you really showed them what to do, huh? Yeah. How is he yet? Is he pretty good at, at the shots? He's wonderful. He's uh -huh. wonderful. You're a little in awe of him, aren't you? I give him a lot of credit. It's, um, it's really tough to deal with, and he does a remarkable job. He just, he's brave. Mm -hmm. Seeing him give himself his own injections is, um, it's tough. It's tough for a parent to watch. But I'm very proud of him. Yeah, those needles are going in you, as we've heard other parents say. And you'd rather yeah, take them for yourself. Of course. Yourself. Yeah. Of course. And um, uh, Children's Hospital, tell us about the folks there. How are they? Mm -hmm. How do they treat you? Treat me well, good. Thank you. Uh, you have to make some friends there? Yes. Yeah. They're nice people at Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have Children's Hospital, what would you have done? Um, we would have survived. We would have done okay. I don't think we would have gotten the education that we got. I don't think that we would have had the the doctors and the nurses that are so dedicated. Um, I'm glad that we didn't have to worry about not having Children's Hospital. I'm glad that we, we had that option. If you had a million dollars in cash in front of you, would you give it to Children's Hospital right now? Absolutely. Without, without a second thought? Without a second thought. Yeah. You know, we're not asking you to give a million dollars in cash. We're asking you to give whatever you can. I mean, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, hundred thousand dollars. $20, whatever it is, the Children's Hospital is remarkable. Here is a case with a young man who, as Sue said, you know, you would have survived, not perhaps to the same degree of, of richness and fullness that you have gotten from Children's Hospital. There are other kids, there are other kids who would die, literally die, without Children's Hospital. And there are kids who are living, and we've met some of them, solely because of the existence of Children's Hospital. So we want to make sure today, and this is the day to do it, and these are the last few hours to do it, that you make sure that this kind of miracle work that goes on at Children's Hospital continues. Please call us at 1213-669-5000 and 1-800-457-4400. Remember, it's too quiet in here. We need these phones ringing to get the...